So in your neck of the woods, things may be progressing at a nice rate and the temperature may be climbing. And when that happens, we wanna get all those cars onto the track, usually as fast as possible. But choosing a wheel for the track may be a little bit more complicated than you thought. Today, we are answering questions that we commonly get about choosing the right track wheel for your car. Let's get into it. What's going on? I'm Scott from Koenig, and today we are talking about the questions you had about wheels relating to choosing the right one for the track. Let's get into this first question. Uh, can I run a cast wheel on the track? So this is an answer that I give with a little bit of variance here. And what I mean by that is, look, you can run a cast wheel on track, no problems at all. What you wanna do is make sure that you're properly mating your wheel to your application. If you are going to be using your car on track, make sure you're considering the load rating of the vehicle and the fact that that weight shift is going to occur. So you wanna kinda of calculate in some of that. And in addition to that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that any arrow that you have is also going to be considered and make sure the load rating is matched up to your wheels. Now, if you do this, it doesn't really matter what construction you use as far as being on the track. Now, does that mean that they have all the performance enhancements that a flow form wheel and a forge wheel will have? Absolutely not. You're gonna find that a flow formed wheel and forge wheels are gonna to start to become lesser in weight for the given size that you're looking to run and potentially have a higher tensile strength and you'll have uh, the ability to have a little bit more elongation, which is flex before a metal would end up in a braking state. So if you're gonna be using a wheel continuously on track, I think those uh, benefits are important to consider. If you don't have the money to buy a flow formed wheel, a forged wheel, and you have you know, a, just a traditional cast wheel on your vehicle and it's good quality, uh, you should be totally fine. Don't be worried about that. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you continuously inspect your wheels, especially as you race on them. Wheels are a wear item, and at some point, they could always end up into that issue where they need to be replaced. So just keep that in mind. But aside from that, the construction shouldn't dictate your use. What should dictate your use is kind of all the uh, caveats of, you know, kind of what benefits you need and kind of making sure that that load rating is safe for what type of racing you're doing. All right, so this next question is actually pretty interesting because I think the intended purpose of the question is not really great, but where we need to go with it, I think will be much better. The question is, what should I consider when I'm choosing the size of my wheel for the track? Um, here's the thing. I think that there's always gonna be a situation in different racing that's gonna dictate whether a diameter, which is what this question was intended for, is faster in certain racing situations. For example, if you need to accelerate very quickly and you're more in a straight line configuration, you're probably gonna be worried about making sure that you have the proper tire height, but you're also gonna be worried about making sure that you don't go too large on the wheel because it's gonna take more momentum usually to get that wheel to move. So if our acceleration is our main concern, like a drag race or something to that effect, going smaller usually will end up with a faster situation. Now, that's a caveat because there's always gonna be circumstances where that's not true. So these are all things that you have to keep in mind. However, um, I will say that in a lot of road race situations, we tend to see that going down on size, let's say if you have a Honda Civic, uh, 15 inch versus 17 inch, that the 15 inch will tend to be a little bit faster. Now this could be a lot of reasons from tire size and tire quality and different things that are available. Um, but what I will say is there was a really interesting video that Speed Academy did on this where they compared uh, a Civic 15 inch versus 17 inch on the track. They ended up finding out the 15 inch was faster, but the reasons why, I'm gonna leave you to find out right in their video. Head over to their YouTube channel, uh, Speed Academy, where you can actually see this video uh, for yourself. All right, so here's a question that comes in about knurled bead seats. And the question is, does a knurled bead seat actually make that much of a difference? And I think the answer depends on your use. When it comes down to using your car on the street, no, I don't think neural bead seats are really something you should even have to even think about, right? For the most power that you're gonna put down on the street uh, or even high horsepower applications, I don't really see the street use being the issue. I think the issue is more or less when you start to get onto a racetrack or you start to get into a place where you're really gonna be using your car to the limits. That's usually a place where a high power car that has a lot of torque can potentially make enough power where the tire is sticky and the wheel starts to rotate or start to spin within the tire. And this absolutely does happen. So what the neural bead seats are is on the bead seat of the wheel where the tire would sit, 
we have these uh, cuts that are in there to create like more of a sharp uh, kind of edge so that continuously around that bead seat, they're kind of grabbing the tire and, and kind of preventing it from wanting to rotate um, and keeping the wheel and tire kind of attached together in that sense. So, you know, for those applications, it absolutely can make a big difference. And uh, it's something that you don't want to start to give away a little bit of power or kind of feel of acceleration or anything like that because your wheel is actually spinning within your tire. These things do work. And that's where I would consider it use uh, if you want to pick up a wheel that has a neural BT. So thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Again, if you are just new to this FAQ series, we've done plenty of these before. In addition to that, we've actually even done uh, uh, one of these track wheel FAQs before this. So if you haven't seen that, go back and check it out. Maybe more of your questions will already be answered. But if we still haven't answered them, then throw them down below and we'll be happy to answer them even more. That may be right. We'll catch you on the next one.